Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Dean Machine podcast. On this podcast, I'm going to speak about the US and EU sanctions on Turkey. So let's get to it. On the 14th of December 2020, Turkey's Pres- Presidency of Defense Industries, otherwise known as SSB, received a host of sanctions on them. And this was announced by US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Now, the reason for these sanctions is because the Presidency of Defense Industries acquired the S-400 surface-to-air missile system. But what are the details of these sanctions? Well, these sanctions include a ban on all US export licenses and authorizations to SSB and an asset freeze and visa restrictions on Dr. Ismail Dimmer. He was the current president of SSB and also the visa restrictions on other senior SSB officers. Also, Mike Pompeo added in a press briefing that the sanctions on Turkey had been imposed via via the Section 231 of the Countering America's Adversaries through Sanctions Act, otherwise known as CATSA, which allows imposing economic sanctions on any entity or country concluding arms deals with Russian companies, adding that today's action sends a clear signal that the United States will fully implement CATSA Section 231 and will not tolerate significant transactions with Russia's defense and intelligence sectors. So as you can see, America's action is a reaction to Turkey's decision to end her affiliation to the US. One reason is that America is supporting the Syrian Democratic Forces, i.e. the SDF, which is a military group who is connected to the Kurdistan Workers' Party, which is the PKK. Now, the PKK wants separation of areas in Turkey which, which are widely populated with the Kurds. Of course, Erdogan does not want that, Ultimately, that will take a big chunk of Turkey and it will cause more division within the Ummah. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Kurdish situation, which has cropped up as a result of the US project in supporting the rise of Kurdish entity, which would slice parts of Turkey, as I mentioned before. Not only Turkey, but Syria, Iraq and Iran. And these countries, for their part, converged on the aim of preventing the Kurds from establishing their entity contrary to America's volition. On top of all of this, i.e. the sanctions, um, i.e. America supporting Kurdish entities, um, which is all against um, Turkey's interest. Also, uh, you guys remember 2016, what happened with the coup attempt? Well, that also caused tension between Turkey and America who was also backing the coup against Erdogan. This then led to a cause of a significant rapprochement between Russia and Turkey, especially after Erdogan had concluded a peace deal with Putin following the downing of the Russian jet fighter. So let's get back to the purchase of the Russian surface to air defense system S-400. One of the reasons why Erdogan purchased the S-400 because it was his gesture of goodwill to Putin. Putin also loves the idea of widening the wedge between Turkey and the US. This will heighten the tension between NATO member states again at a strategic and nationalist level as well as a personal gain that bolstered his domestic popularity and who managed to take full advantage of the collapse of US-Turkish negotiations on the Patriot missile deal as America refused to include the transfer of technology in the contract. So you can see that Russia wants to cause a rift between Turkey and NATO member states. And whilst Russia is supplying Turkey, this causes America to become infuriated by the Russia arms deals because it would make Turkey's armament independent. America's control 
over its efficacy. And due to these deals, America is trying its utmost best in causing Turkey a lot of issue, i.e. like the sanctions that has been placed on Turkey. And adding to this, not just America, but Canada, Japan and Germany suspended their export licenses for the equipment Turkey needs for the production of tanks and drones. So this led to Turkey not able to provide Pakistan with tanks, losing $1 billion. As you can see, this was a big embarrassment to Erdogan, who was always boasted during party rallies about Turkey's success in reducing Turkey's dependence on foreign weapon systems from 80% to 30%. So how did America take advantage of this? Well, America knows that Turkey wants to achieve independence in military industrialization. So America gave the green light to Ukraine for establishing closer ties with Turkey and share a number of vital military technologies such as turboprop engines, diesel engines, aircraft electronics, radar and surveillance systems, missile engines and electronic power steering systems. This will ultimately drive a wedge between Turkey and Russia because we all know Ukraine and Russia don't get along. And remember Turkey is a NATO member and Ukraine supports NATO, especially when the Crimea situation took place, NATO back to Ukraine. Adding to the rift between Turkey and Russia, Ukraine's Prime Minister Reznikov Oleksiy visited Turkey in August 2020 to bolster the alliance between the two countries by selling about 25% of the JSC Motor Sikh Public joint stock company to Turkish firms, which causes Putin domestic embarrassment in respect of his relationship with Erdogan due to the Russian people's resentment towards the Ukrainians. So as I mentioned before, US and EU sanctions were placed on Turkey to show Turkey and to the world their standpoint and displaying a form of influence and power they have. As for the US sanctions on Turkey, they are designed to reassure the Re European states which felt let down that she has not abandoned them as Macron claimed and to deter Erdogan from deepening his relationship with Russia especially following Putin's praising of Erdogan a few days ago. The American standpoint towards Turkey is strategic and unaffected by a change in the administration. The sanctions were approved by the US Congress years ago during the tenure of Donald Trump, who deferred their implementation for tactical reasons and for mutual interest. But now the time has come to express a standpoint and send the message through soft sanctions. These sanctions are also designed to issue a warning to Turkey, who issued instructions to the Syrian armed groups loyal to her to attack Kurdish positions in Ain Issa in the northern countryside of Raqqa after the Kurds rejected a Russian proposal to hand that area over to the Syrian regime. The attack on the Kurds was carried out following a Russo-Turkish understanding and coordination. Erdogan deemed the recent US sanctions a flagrant infringement of Turkey's sovereign rights. He said that the main aim of the sanctions was to hamper Turkey's progress in defense industrialization and to keep her dependent on foreign technology. This means Erdogan has perceived the purport of the sanctions and that Turkey should expect further pressure during Biden's tenure. So in conclusion, you can see that the Western powers want Turkey under control. They want it to be on their side. They don't want Turkey to be independent of military industrialization. So they want to control it. 
And the way they're doing that is by sanctions, by even giving them uh, Ukraine to help them out with military uh, facilities, or even Ukraine giving them companies. You know, it's sort of like bribing them. So you're bribing the com uh, country and you're also blackmailing the country as well. Meaning that if you, if you do deals with Russia, then we're going to lay down sanctions through the US, through the EU. So you can see that they really want Turkey under their thumb. And they don't want Turkey to be independent in military um, gear. So anyway, I conclude this uh, podcast now. And like always, just share, comment, like, subscribe and click on the bell button to get instant notification every time Dean Machine uploads a video. And as always, please make dua for me and my family. Assalamu alaikum.